Hello guys, how are you doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Hey, I wanted to share this really beautiful camera with you guys today. Now I feel like I am in the place where I am finally uh, comfortable shooting with my TLRs. And for those of you that did not watch my other episode, I'm gonna put a link right up there. Uh, click on it and watch it. That's uh, my review of this beautiful camera right here. And this was the Yashica 635 TLR. And as I shared that experience with you guys, I just simply love this camera. Today, however, I wanna talk about my experience with another similar camera that I have in my possession. I, I purchased this just around the same time that I purchased uh, the Yashica 635. So just the other day, after I, I experimented with the uh, Yashica 635 and seeing the results that I got, which I shared with you guys, I decided to take this other camera for a spin. And this camera is the Zeiss Icoflex. And this, I think this version is the 1A version. And look at this beauty, guys. Look at this beauty. This is such an awesome, awesome camera. Now I must say that this camera here has its quirks. It's not as easy to work with as this one here. However, this camera here gives impeccable results. I would say the results that I got from this were on par, or maybe, actually, it was on par with the Yashica 635. I can't even tell the difference between the two uh, in terms of the quality of the images that I got. I was able to get some really, really sweet images with this camera. Loading this camera is not a breeze, okay? The Yashica 635, the beautiful thing about the Yashica 635 was that it was straightforward and I'm gonna put a link right there on how to load that camera. As I showed you guys, it wasn't too difficult. Now, at a later date, I'm gonna show you guys how to load film into this camera, but it's not as easy as the Yashica 635. It's not because you have to literally reset the counter. Uh, the counter here is not automatically like the Yashica 635. I mean, that one, you just open the back, insert your film, and then it resets, and then you just advance and it will count to 12 exposures, just like that, automatically. This one here, you actually have to manually set, into, set it into a mode where you are able to advance without any any stops, right? It's, um, it's a little complicated, but I'm gonna go through that process with you guys and I'll explain it. Once you get it, it's easy to work with, okay? Once you get it, it's easy to work with. But I had to go through that initial learning curve and I'm hoping that my problems or my trouble it will will be your convenience and that's why you guys subscribe to me so that I can go through that trouble and save you some time and some trouble right and um, anyways so this camera the lens is amazing 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 guys just beautiful amazing lens and this is the Tessar uh, this is a Zeiss Tessar Optin lens is f 3.5 and 75 millimeters take a look at that beauty take a look at that so as you can tell this lens is perfect for um, portrait photography um, I took I took it out for a spin with my kids and I'm gonna showcase those images very soon and the images I got were just sweet, just beautiful. I mean, just taking a look at the negatives, it, it just looked like silk. Just beautiful, beautiful images, you know? And uh, that's, that's the beauty of film photography, guys. These cameras will outperform any digital camera every single time, guys. Every single time. I'm not kidding. This is such a delight to shoot with. Once you get through the initial hurdle of, lo of loading this properly, the rest is easy, okay? The rest is smooth and it's easy 
Now this camera is set up to prevent you from doing multiple exposures and that's the one of the only uh, cons that I would that I found with this camera um, you cannot do multiple exposures with this camera which is a bit of a bummer however however the images are sweet and excellent so in order to open the back all you have to do is pull on this button here and the back will just open just like that it's quite simple to do now loading film onto this is similar to uh, loading film in the Yashica 635 but like I said you do have to go through the initial setup with this uh, counter uh, system over here which I will explain in a later video the other difference between this one and the Yashica 635 is that this one actually comes also with the addition of this uh, window over here so you're able to actually track your film advance and through the numbers that you will see here in order to focus you're gonna use this to advance the lens board right there and this is how you focus the shutter speeds are advanced with this dial over here and the range in the shutter speed is from uh, one second to th one over three hundredth of a second and i must say is that that's not very fast right so if you're shooting this in really bright conditions you may have to use other ways or develop other methods to really ensure that you have the right exposure. This little switch over here is what you use to change the aperture. And as I move the switch, I can change the aperture from f3.5 to f16 right there. And um, to be honest, that is not a big range right f3.5 to f16 considering the fact that the fastest speed you can get for this shutter is one over 300th of a second that's not very fast so the issue with this camera that i anticipate is that if it if it's in really bright settings you're gonna have an issue with your exposure right uh, one way to get around this would be to use filters like an ND filter to sort of bring the light down if you're shooting this in a really bright setting. Um, obviously this camera doesn't come with a, a, a meter built in. You're gonna need an external uh, light meter to work with a camera like this. Um, you basically regulate your ISO by the film that you put in there. The other thing that I need to share with you guys is that this camera is a bit temperamental. If you do not shoot in the right sequence, you can actually lock up the shutter and it'll take quite a bit of fiddling to get that unlocked. It's my experience with this camera. It's not as straightforward as the Yashica TLR, but like I said, it's a really quality camera and it'll give you excellent results. As long as you understand the camera, and you understand how temperamental that it can get. My suggestion to you is if you're getting a camera like this particular model here, um, take some time to read the manual. The manuals are out there. I will actually put a link to the manual in the description of this video. So click on it if you have this camera, read the manual before you try to uh, shoot with it. What I love about this camera, number one, the lens is beautiful. This waist level uh, viewfinder here is amazing. It gives really clear images, which are on par with the images I got from my Yashica um, 635 as well. So the bottom line is, I love this camera, okay? And I, I can only say that because I actually understand this camera. I can only say that because I've shot with this camera once and I've seen the images and I love the images and I love the experience of shooting with this camera. I've actually, um, I, I, I've experimented with this camera. I understand it. I've read the manual and I understand this camera. So I can tell you guys that I love this camera, but I can see how this camera can frustrate a beginner or somebody that's just getting into TLRs, okay? 
if you are getting into TLRs, my advice to you is don't start with a camera like this one. It will frustrate you. It will just, it will just make you uh, discouraged. Okay, you really need the time to spend with a camera like this to understand it and not make mistakes. You could wreck the camera if you, if you try and force it after the, for example, after this gets locked up. You don't want to go through that process. If you're starting with TLRs, you want to experiment. I, I can't recommend this one enough. However, if you're confident and you you know your way around cameras, film cameras, that is. By all means, go for something like this. I still really love it. The other thing that I would uh, mention is that it has a self timer in there. Now because of the complexity of shooting with this and totally being on board and understanding the timing here, I have not bothered to even use that. And the reason, the other reason is that when I did, it got locked up. Um, for some reason so either it's broken or <laughs> I don't want to tempt fate I do not want to tempt fate so I'm not using it if you pay attention uh, there are these two modes over here now there's the X and the M mode apparently uh, this thing here is redundant what I read was that you just leave it in the X mode so I think these modes were for a flash sync mode which is no longer uh, being used so just keep this in the X position and you're good to go and as you can see here you can insert your external flash units uh, right there and uh, be able to fire this uh, with an external flash unit so at this point I'm going to showcase some of the images that I have shot with this lovely camera guys and I hope that you guys enjoy looking at them Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed looking at those images. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching this video. And as always guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and stay safe.